right now at five Joplin residents didn't let the cloudy weather stop them from celebrating the solar eclipse. And it's a good thing the eclipse isn't taking place right now. We've got showers. We've got thunderstorms across the area to stop. Well, there, lightning. It never shows up on air. We'll have a look at your forecast. Get you out the door coming up. Plus, students in Commerce, Oklahoma, take part in a mock crash scene investigation with the help of local law enforcement officials. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 5 a.m. I'm Elise Snowy. I'm Chris Warner. So you folks at home, you know, anytime we have some thunderstorms in the area, we show 50 cameras outside right. and there's not a single flash of lightning. As soon as we go away from that camera, there is. So it's rare that that actually mm -hmm. happens. Now, the good news is it's not severe weather. Oh, good. Good. Just a little lightning flash for you, Chris. Uh, I, the, Mother Nature doing, doing me a solid this morning. <laughs> uh, real quick, though, did you get to see the eclipse yesterday? I did, yes. It was actually, it was really beautiful. I saw it with my glasses out there on my deck. How about you, Chris? I, same. I was, I was at home, and I just kind of gradually watched it get yeah. darker and darker. And you know, it, seemed more, it seemed more like it was getting ready to storm until you right, look close yes. enough and you could still see sunlight yes. on the ground. So it was a pretty neat experience. Hopefully Absolutely. some of you got to experience it as well. No such experiences today. In fact, we're starting our day with thunderstorms. Let's start with that look outside first. This is the uh, our camera on top of the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. So we've got some rain showers out there and we've got some thunderstorms across the area. MoDOT camera 32nd and range line looking a little bit on the wet side. Not significantly so, but we are getting some showers and the Skywatch storm. Whoa, easy there. Sky I watch storm tracker showing us those scattered showers and storms so you can see there is some lightning embedded in some of these storms out there so we'll start back in northeast oklahoma and into southeastern kansas we had this guy just starting to exit uh the pittsburgh area rolling into barton county we've got a storm near oswego back into uh nawada uh, craig county and nawada counties we've got some thunderstorms out there as well heading off to the east a few more around monette we've got the one here in joplin right now so again no severe weather with any of this activity just some scattered storms to get our day started and they will eventually clear out as we head a little further through the day. Sitting at 57 in Joplin right now, 51 in Pittsburgh. Temperatures around the region. We've got some 40s. We've got some 50s. We've even got some low 60s out there. So that's why we do have some of these thunderstorms. We're a little mild. Got just enough to get a couple of storms out there. Some of these may continue. So as the kids get on the bus, expect a shower or storm. 54 northeast breeze at about 5 to 10. Then these clear out by about 8, 9 o'clock. Be mostly cloudy when the bus brings the kids home. 72 winds out of the northeast, occasionally gusting to 25. Again, storms wrap up about 8, 9 o'clock. We partly to mostly cloudy today highs into the low 70s and we'll have additional showers and thunderstorms overnight tonight and as we head into tomorrow we'll look at all that in the full forecast here in just a few more minutes Elise. All right thanks Chris. The deputy is injured in a head-on fatal collision near Elk City Kansas. It happened early Sunday morning as a Montgomery County deputy was responding to a non-injury vehicle accident on Highway 160 out of Independence Kansas. Well, en route, another vehicle veered into oncoming traffic, causing a head-on collision that left the deputy seriously injured. The driver of the oncoming vehicle died on scene. The injured deputy and three other people were taken to the hospital. Students at Commerce High School had the opportunity to learn about distracted driving and driving under the influence. Students participated in a mock crash at the school's football stadium with the help of area law enforcement agencies. Some of the students participated as actors. If you're ever on the go and want to still be able to watch our newscast live, just download the KOM Plus app. It's available free of charge on the app store of your choice. Just search for KOM Plus. KOM Samantha Walker shows us the eclipse experience at the celebration party in Joplin. A solar eclipse is not something you see every day. So people across the four states were ready to go outside in hopes of catching the event. The Creative Learning Alliance in Joplin hosted a series of events leading up to the eclipse. During the solar event, the organization hosted a celebration, an eclipse viewing party where the community could come out and experience the event together. So this is the last eclipse that's going to be visible in North America until 2044 and in Missouri until 2045. So we wanted to make sure that all of those people that couldn't travel had a place to watch the eclipse. 
While the four-state area was not in totality, meaning the sun would be completely blocked, local Eclipse fans were still excited for the rare opportunity. It looks like the um, moon is about to cover up the sun and it's kind of um, coming on it so slowly. While the daylight got noticeably darker during the eclipse, clouds in the sky blocked some views of the event. But eclipse watchers say that didn't hurt their experience. I mean, there is just enough of cloud coverage that it's not too hot out because it's 77 degrees out. It's been crazy to have that weather today, but I think it's been a great opportunity to uh, view the eclipse. But for some solar eclipse viewers, experiencing it as a community is the most important part. I think it's because it's a once in a lifetime event that we're able to come and enjoy. You can enjoy with your family and friends and so it does make it just a time to create memories. Reporting in Joplin, Samantha Walker, KOM News. People at the Solar Bration were able to receive their own pair of eclipse glasses to safely view the event. The eclipse reached totality in Mountain View, Missouri and in other places in the southern and eastern parts of the Show Me State. KOAM Shannon Becker streamed live from Mountain View where spectators pulled off the road to watch the event. The eclipse also reached totality in parts of Oklahoma and Arkansas, including Russellville, Arkansas, where Chief Meteorologist Doug Keddy posted his perspective. The eclipse also reached totality in parts, as we mentioned, in Oklahoma and Arkansas, including Lake Dardanelle State Park in Russellville, Arkansas. That's where, of course, Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty enjoyed the view. Well, that's a look at this morning's top stories and weather in our first seven minutes coming up on the KOA Morning News. We are three weeks into the 2024 high school baseball season and Riverton has yet to lose a game. Can they keep it up? Plus, a volcano erupts on an island in the Galapagos. Chain in Ecuador. And rain chances return. We'll have what to expect with Chris Warner in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back. Dr. Chris Wilcox at Precision Dental and Jay Life at KOAMnewsout.com. They've earned it. Four state heroes from KOAM and your Midwest Ford dealers. We're three weeks into the 2024 high school baseball season in Southeast Kansas and Riverton has yet to lose a game. The Rams bring a 10 and 0 record into a CNC doubleheader yesterday afternoon as they play host to Frontenac. Riverton baseball enters the day 10 and 0 at home taking on Frontenac game one of a doubleheader. Top of the first, Jack Capehart is going to hammer this pitch over the left fielder's head. And two runs will come in to score. It's a two RBI double to give Frontenac the early lead. Same inning, Brock Weimers hits one on the ground sharply towards first base. He hustles in for an infield RBI single. It's 3-0 Raiders. Abram Frankenberry on the mound gets a couple of strikeouts in the first, then another in the second. Raiders back at the plate in the second. Cal Turlip laces one to second. That brings in another run. Raiders take game one of the doubleheader. Final score, seven to two. The Raiders also win game two. That one just going final at around nine o'clock last night. This game much closer as well. Riverton had the tying run on third base and winning run on first when the final out was made in the bottom of the seventh. Raiders next play Gerard another in another doubleheader. That's a week from today. Over to college baseball, Missouri Southern's Garrett Rice is named the MIAA Hitter of the Week for the first time in his career. The Lions senior was 7 for 13 against Central Oklahoma over the weekend, hitting a home run and two doubles and helping Southern to a series victory over the 19th ranked Broncos. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh State infielder Caden Trockim is named the MIAA Softball Hitter of the Week. She was a big part of PSU's doubleheader sweep over Missouri Southern on Saturday afternoon, going four for five at the plate with two home runs and seven runs batted in over in the uh, two games. She helped Pittsburgh State win its sixth game in a row and keep its home record perfect. The Gorillas are 20-0 on their home field so far. The 2023-24 college basketball season came to a close last night. Purdue and UConn 
met in the championship of the NCAA men's tournament. For the last couple of weeks, the Boilermakers and Huskies seem destined to match up in the championship game. UConn put on the finishing touches on a second consecutive national championship. The Huskies go on to win this one 75-60. to UConn is the first repeat champion since Florida in 2006 and 2007. Still to come, a new study suggests having less salt in your diet can help you live longer. Plus, we'll have another check of that forecast when the KOAM Morning News returns. Off your old car and drive off in a new Honda. A Roper Honda. Pre arrangement, the thoughtful decision. Call us at Bath Naylor and Frisco Funeral Home. <laughs> Excuse me, welcome back to. <laughs> it's, 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 not, it's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> Now Lisa's laughing at me. That's the only reason I'm laughing because now she's laughing at me. I just had it to clear my throat right at the wrong time and she thinks that's hilarious. Somebody's throwing their phone around the studio. Yeah, okay. Here, let's take a look outside. We got some showers and some thunderstorms out there this morning. Uh, thankfully, again, no severe weather, so don't worry about any of that. But as you can see on our camera, the Cornell Complex, wet roadways out there. Same from the MODOC camera, 32nd and range line as well. We've seen some lightning on these cameras here and there, uh, which is why, of course, we have the thunderstorm aspect. And the KDOT camera south of Pittsburgh, a little bit on the damp side as well. Just had a thunderstorm roll through the Pittsburgh area. We've got showers and storms in the Joplin area. We're going to start in southeast in Kansas, where we still have some showers south of Pittsburgh over Columbus near Oswego. See, we're getting some lightning strikes. There's a fair amount of lightning out there. Nothing extreme, but nonetheless, you still want to take it easy because even though these storms aren't severe, lightning can still be deadly regardless of the storm strength. We got a few shower storms around Corsicana, Cassville, Monette, uh, just south of there and east of there as well, south of Mount Vernon. Back in the northeastern Oklahoma, showers around Benita, Chelsea, Langley, uh, outside of Lenapa and the water, getting ready for some additional thunderstorm activity around Miami. And again, all this is kind of flaring up in the last few hours here. Again, nothing severe, nothing crazy. And in the next two or three hours, it'll all be right back out of here again. So is what we're expecting. By about 9 o'clock, showers and storms are gone. We'll be partly to mostly cloudy as we start to head into the afternoon hours. Have some gusty northeast winds pushing 25 at times. As we head into the evening, a few isolated showers initially, and then overnight, we're going to see another round of showers and thunderstorms almost at this exact same time tomorrow. We're going to start to see more showers and storms. The only difference with tomorrow is, is while it's not an all-day rain event, we will have chances for showers and thunderstorms throughout our day on Wednesday. And again, Again, no severe weather is expected at this point. In fact, uh, that's really good news because unfortunately they're expecting a potentially significant severe weather outbreak down around the uh, Gulf Coast. So thankfully we're not going to be contending with any of that around the area. All right, raining in Joplin right now. 57 variable breeze at about three miles an hour. Temperatures, they're also quite variable. We have some upper 40s, low 50s. You head south, you started to get into upper 50s and even some low 60s out there. As we go through the morning, again, showers, couple of thunderstorms will begin to taper off by about nine o'clock this morning, mostly cloudy following that 62. And then as we clear out just a bit with the clouds, it'll be just enough to get our temperatures into the low 70s across the area to begin partly to mostly cloudy skies, depending on where you are out there. And in some cases, you may even momentarily be completely clear as we head into the afternoon before more clouds roll in. Start to see a few isolated showers as we head through the late evening hours and a few more scattered showers and storms overnight and our low similar to what it was yesterday back in to the low 50s out there. Temperatures still into the 60s for us on our Wednesday, 60s on Thursday, still breezy both days as well. And then as we head into the weekend and then start of next week, take a look at those temperatures into the 80s out there. We're talking May like weather starting to show up and then we'll see a few more thunderstorm chances by next Tuesday and Thursday. Let's check your forecast. We'll be back with more of the KOAM morning news right after this. High location today to save. Restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Offer ends April 30, 2024. Topping Health Watch this morning. Well, this time of year, it's a popular hobby. Gardening has so many health benefits, including exercise. You can even eat the healthy food you plant. But if you're not careful, this hobby can wreak havoc on your body. Mandy Gaither has more on how you can save your neck and back while gardening. 
It's spring, and if you're looking to plan a new healthy hobby, let gardening take root in your life. It's nice to get outside, have the benefits of sunshine, have the benefits of the beauty and the, the really tasty stuff that can come from your garden. Dr. Deborah Benzel with Cleveland Clinic says gardening has numerous health benefits, but you need to prepare your body before you get started. Stretch, then focus on not bending over too much and avoid picking things up from a bent over position. Um, there's a lot of bending and lifting and caring involved in gardening and all of those things put a lot of stress on our neck and our back. Rotate your body regularly to avoid stiff muscles, lift heavy things with your legs, and avoid sudden twisting or reaching motions. Also make sure you're using the proper gardening equipment. You want to use tools that fit your body and that are sharp and that are effective so that you can have the tool do the work whether, rather than your body do the work. And once you're done, it's time to stretch again. If you're feeling achy, Benzel says to try some ice or anti-inflammatory medicine. You can get up and get back in the garden the next day. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. The doctor says stretches should be low and deep to hold that position for a bit to allow the muscles to really stretch and relax. Well, a new study suggests having less salt in your diet can have important health benefits that includes living longer. Researchers in Australia examined more than a dozen previous studies that involved more than 35,000 patients. They were on average 64 years old and at a higher than normal risk for heart disease. The study found cutting out salt or using a salt substitute lowered the risk of dying early from heart disease. The American Heart Association recommends most adults, especially with high blood pressure, ideally limit their daily sodium intake to 1500 milligrams a day. Researchers caution people who eat a lot of a packaged or restaurant food are likely getting more sodium in their diet than recommended. New research shows accelerated aging is linked to higher to a higher cancer risk in younger adults. Researchers looked at the medical records of nearly 150,000 people ages 37 to 54 in a large data registry in the UK. They put blood-based markers into an algorithm to determine each person's biological age as opposed to how many years they've been alive or chronological age. They found accelerated aging in which a person's cells are aging faster. Those associated with increased risk for cancer. They found the strongest associations with lung, stomach, intestinal, and uterine cancers. A new poll from KFF, formerly known as the Kaiser Family Foundation, found most women in states with abortion bans want it to be legal. At the national level, an even higher percentage of women want abortion rights protected. The poll also found one in seven women in states with abortion bans say they or someone they know has had trouble getting an abortion. KFF polls comes almost two years after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, eliminating the federal constitution right to an abortion. Since that controversial ruling, abortion has been banned in 14 states and limited in 11 others. Former President Donald Trump announced today that abortion rights should be left to the states. Trump's announcement was made in a video posted to social media offering his clearest stance yet on one of America's most delicate and contentious political issues. Washington correspondent Michael Yoshida gives us a look at how his latest declaration is being received by those on both sides of the aisle. We have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint. In a video posted to his Truth Social account, former President Donald Trump seeming to punt on the issue of abortion, saying after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, abortion rights should now be left to the states. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks or some will have more conservative than others and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. Trump did not indicate the number of weeks during a pregnancy at which he thinks it would be appropriate to ban an abortion, but he did reiterate his support for certain exceptions, such as victims of rape and incest or when a mother's life is in danger. President Joe Biden attacking Trump's abortion message, accusing the former president of lying and saying in part, 
Trump is scrambling. He's worried that since he's the one responsible for overturning Roe, the voters will hold him accountable in 2024. Well, I have news for Donald. They will. Trump's video also getting immediate backlash from the leading anti-abortion group Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America, writing in part, We are deeply disappointed in President Trump's position. Unborn children and their mothers deserve national protections and national advocacy. Democrats also criticizing Trump's latest attempt to clarify his stance. He shouldn't duck this issue. This is an important one for the American public. After appointing three conservatives to the Supreme Court, Democrats have tried to tie Trump to a wave of anti-abortion laws passed since Roe was overturned in 2022. In Washington, I'm Michael Yoshida reporting. And that's a look at some of today's top health stories. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. And we are, have got some showers and thunderstorms across the area this morning. Nothing severe, but don't be surprised if you hear a rumble of thunder. And of course, do play it safe with the lightning. We'll have another look at your forecast when the KOAM Morning News returns. Quality, compassionate. Quality, compassionate, affordable care. Right now at 530, historic Route 66 runs right through Galena, Kansas, and now a new sign marks that distinction. And we've got some scattered showers and even some thunderstorms out there to start our day. We'll talk about how long those will last and how the rest of our day is shaping up coming up. Plus, after <clears throat> excuse me, buying her studio as a teenager, a Southeast Kansas dance instructor nears a decade in business. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. It's 530. I'm Elise Snowy. I'm Chris Warner. So got a few thunderstorms out there yes. this morning. We got some much needed rain. The good news is no severe weather, but got to remember, even though the storms aren't severe, the lightning is still dangerous, Absolutely. still deadly, yes. and we're we're getting a fair amount of lightning out there. Yeah, so. looks like it. We also had the eclipse yesterday. Yes, so we did. Hopefully everyone got to see some of that. I mean, I know we didn't have totality here. It's only 95%, but still impressive. Yeah, still it, amazing It got pretty see. dark out yeah, there, but still amazing. it was absolutely incredible. I was doing the math. I'm like, our oldest child will be in her 30s by the time the next well, eclipse comes through it. there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be, uh, my wife, when I was doing the math, she's like, oh, good, We'll be about Medicare age. Like, <laughs> well, I'm just going to go home now. Sun without any glasses at that point. It, right. <laughs> just gamble. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, let's take a look outside real quick. Uh, this, is our, uh, this is not our camera. I'm sorry. This is the MoDOT camera, and it is located at 32nd and range line. Again, been picking up some lightning. We're getting some uh, moderate rainfall in Joplin right now. we got one little cell out there right over the city, and you can see, let's look at all the concentrated lightning. So that's what I'm saying. Even though these storms aren't severe, they're out, they are still producing a fair amount of lightning. So back in the southeastern Kansas, clearing out. Got a few showers and thunderstorms just south of Columbus, and we've got that one cell that's just kind of parked right over the city of Joplin, uh, right around Carthage and up toward Lamar. Back into southwestern Missouri, some thunderstorms just outside of Cassville, south of Monette, uh, back into parts of Newton and McDonald counties out there. All this activity has flared up within the last few hours, and in the next few hours, it will be gone as quickly as it arrived, as we're expecting to clear out a little bit. We're at 57 in Joplin right now, 52 in Pittsburgh, and we've had rain showers both locations, and as mentioned, still raining in Joplin right now. We've got some upper 40s. We've got low to mid 50s and the further south you go. We've got upper 50s, even some low 60s out there. Kids getting on the bus this morning. Again, a few scattered showers and storms. 54 northeast breeze at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. And then we'll have uh, mostly cloudy skies when that bus brings them home, sitting about 72 northeast wind 10 to 15. So occasional gusts to 25. So again, the showers and storms tapering off by about 9 this morning. And they'll be partly to mostly cloudy through the day. Highs into the low 70s. We do have more showers and storms on the way. And we'll look at all that in detail with your full forecast here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right. See you soon, Chris. Historic Route 66 runs right through Galena, Kansas, and now a new sign marks that distinction. The sign will go in front of Luigi's Pit Stop on East Front Street. The shop is themed around the movie Cars. When the sign is fully painted, drivers will be able to park under it and take some photos. The Southeast Kansas dance instructor is approaching 10 years of business after taking her first steps into entrepreneurship. 
As a teenager, KOM's friend Wallace takes a behind the scenes look at her studio and the dancer's success. A dance academy in Iola, Kansas is getting on the good foot. Also, it's an emerging staple within the community. Just a block south of the largest town square in the U.S. sits a studio where there's lots of laughs, lots of fun, Sound good? And we'll just bump Shelby up. And as you'll see, lots of love. Back up on the table, and then we move to the last. Miss Chelsea's dance academy is a childhood dream fulfilled. Dreamt of by Chelsea yeah. Lee of Iola, Kansas. <laughs> Chelsea's love of dance was set at a very early age as she's been dancing since the age of three. Naturally, the love grew and spilled into wanting to lend a helping hand, assisting her own instructor in any possible way. About 10 or 11, I really got into the working with the kids part of it. Um, obviously, I couldn't be on the payroll, <laughs> but I willingly volunteered my time and just started helping my dance teacher at the time with her classes, um, taking kids to the bathroom, making sure they knew, blowing their nose, tying their shoes, and she would be like, can you show what, the, what, uh, what this step is? And I'd be like, yes. And I was 12 and just so like enamored with the entire aspect of being a dance teacher. Teacher being the operative word, from that experience alone, she honed in on becoming a dance instructor. Opportunity knocking, she had the chance to start an assisting position, which she modestly accepted. I was like, sign me up. What day do you need me? What time? <laughs> the rest is pretty much history. Before graduating high school, she had an even greater opportunity available. Perching the studio she was assisting in. Taking on the task with no hesitation, using the money she was originally saving for a car and putting it towards the studio, ensuring her dream. Approaching 10 years of business with accolades to boot, most recently being awarded the Ace of Initiative Award by the Iola Chamber of Commerce, Chelsea's most valued awards are her core values of love and family, which is felt by her dancers. A lot of it is also everybody loves dance and like there's such a family energy here and Chelsea is a huge part of that obviously, but like I call all of the little girls my little sisters and I'm their big sister, so it's one big family. The love and support for the community are big factors in the ongoing success of the studio. The reciprocation of it is evident at Miss Chelsea's Dance Academy, where there's lots of laughs, lots of fun, and... <laughs> Reporting in Iola, Friends Wallace, KOAM News. The Dance Academy's next performance will be May 31st and June 1st at the Bolus Fine Arts Center in Iola. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOA Morning News. A hijacked cargo ship has been recovered by authorities in Haiti after a deadly shootout. Plus, a Hamas official says no progress has been made in a new round of ceasefire talks in Egypt. We'll have the latest. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. A partner of the St. Louis Cardinals. Topping World Watch, the Vatican doubling down on its position against surrogacy and gender-affirming surgery. Ted Lindner takes a closer look at what it all means, and the message is met with fierce opposition. Strong reactions pouring in. I think it's stupid, but I, I'm not surprised. This after the Vatican declared surrogacy and gender-affirming surgery are grave threats to human dignity comparing them to abortion and euthanasia as procedures that go against God's plan for life. These ideologies, instead of helping to recognize dignity, impoverish a humanistic vision where man and woman are the most beautiful combination and the greatest difference that humanity contains. Monday's announcement is part of a 20-page document called Infinite Dignity. It's been five years in the making and recently approved by Pope Francis. This is not a new position for the Vatican. Pope Francis himself has said this before on several occasions. He has a real problem with uh, what he calls gender ideology. Um, and so this document now puts that on paper. While the Pope has made strides to be more inclusive to the LGBTQ community, the Vatican is solidifying its position against the notion a person's biological sex at birth can be changed. Transgender Catholics and advocates call the stance backwards. Anything that is dictated as no or wrong sets up trouble and problems in the past and opens up a portal for hate. 
As for surrogacy, the Vatican believes the practice violates the surrogate mother and the child, saying the gift of life should not be artificial. There is always the possibility of adoption for many who need to have a family. It doesn't matter so much that it's at least biologically mine or not. A volcano erupts on an island in the Galapagos chain in Ecuador. The eruption sent lava into, <clears throat> excuse me, into the sea and lit up the night sky. The La Cumbre volcano erupted on March 2nd and the volcanic activity is being monitored. Since the island is uninhabited, the situation poses no risk to people, but the island is home to a number of species, including iguanas and penguins. The La Cumbre volcano is one of the most active in the Galapagos Island chain, which is famous throughout the world for helping Charles Darwin develop his theory of evolution. A hijacked cargo ship has been recovered by authorities in Haiti after a deadly shootout that killed several police and gang members. The Saturday gun battle off the coast of the capital lasted over five hours and left two police officers and an unknown amount of gang members dead. It's reported they kidnapped everyone aboard the ship and stole around 10,000 sacks of rice. The vessel's retrieval represents a rare victory for police as they have had trouble dealing with gang violence since the unrest began in late February. Well, there's been speculation about the true meaning of recent Israeli troop movements in Gaza. This as Hamas officials say no progress has been made in a new round of ceasefire talks in Egypt. Correspondent Trey Gingst has the story from Tel Aviv. This victory requires entering Rafah and eliminating the terrorist battalions there. This will happen. There is a date. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu laying out clear indications that his troops will enter Gaza's southernmost city of Rafah. The comments come after a surprise move over the weekend, with Israel withdrawing nearly all its forces from Gaza, leaving just one brigade with a few thousand soldiers behind. But Israeli officials say the tactical decision is not an indication the war against Hamas is over, rather a recalibration amid emerging regional threats. I presume this is a tactical decision by the IDF and Israeli leadership in the face of a threat of a real attack from the north, from Hezbollah, or a direct attack from Iran. As fighting grinds to a halt on Israel's southern front, negotiators met Monday in Cairo, Egypt, to hammer out the details of a ceasefire proposal. Teams from Israel, the United States, and Hamas, all vying for an agreement that could end the conflict, unlike past negotiations that aimed for a temporary pause. Hamas claims no progress was made in the talks, but the meetings are seen as a last-ditch effort to avert an Israeli operation into Rafah and rescue the remaining hostages. With ongoing ceasefire talks about Gaza, Israeli forces now look north to Lebanon, where this morning a Hezbollah field commander was killed in an Israeli airstrike. This is not routine. We are in a multi-arena war. There is no reason for panic, but also no place for complacency. We must be aware of the situation and always prepared. Israel is now faced with a multi-front conflict that could escalate further if Iran gets directly involved. And that's a look at some of your biggest headlines from around the world. We'll be right back. Be greatly appreciated. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 546, almost 547 on this Tuesday morning, and we've got some showers and thunderstorms out there. Thankfully, nothing severe, but it's a bit breezy. There's some lightning out there, and of course, lightning, whether the storm is severe or not, still can be dangerous and deadly, so do to be careful out there. But it's breezy. We've got some moderate rain falling in Joplin, starting to let up a little bit, and that's our camera on the Cornell Complex. Modoc camera, 32nd in range line. We've got the wet roadways. We've got the showers. We've got storms, and the KDOC 
satellite camera south of Pittsburgh starting to clear up a little bit. We had some showers and storms in the Pittsburgh area earlier this morning, but those have moved out. We got showers though just south of here uh, in the Cherokee County on 69, which we can see on the Skywatch storm tracker. So again, scattered showers and storms, but take a look. So back into southeast Kansas clearing out with the exception here of Cherokee County, especially right around Columbus. Take a look at all the lightning strikes. These aren't severe storms, but there's been a fair amount of lightning with these storms and they're stretching back into Missouri right along the I-49 corridor just south of Nevada. Back into other parts of southwest Missouri, some scattered showers and storms in McDonald and Newton counties and uh, heading over around Corsicana, Cassville and to the uh, north of Shell Knob out there. And in the Oklahoma, a few more showers and storms developing out there. So we got a pretty good cell south of Benita in between Benita and Langley right on I-44. And we've got more activity rolling into Miami and into Craig County out there. Again, no severe weather is expected out of any of this, but we are seeing the showers and storms out there. But you can see as quickly as they began to fire up, they are beginning to start to die out out there and they will do so over the next two or three hours. Uh, so as we head into the afternoon, we're going to be partly cloudy uh, to mostly cloudy. And in fact, as you see, some of us may even get moments where we're mostly clear and then we'll see those clouds build back in. We'll have a few possible isolated showers as we head into the evening hours across the area. But our best chances for more scattered showers and storms will be almost like it is now. About 24 hours from now, we'll have another round of showers and thunderstorms out there to get our Wednesday underway. The difference between today and Wednesday, though, is while it won't rain all day, we'll have scattered shower and thunderstorm chances through throughout the day on our Wednesday across the area. But again, some good news. No severe weather expected. Unfortunately, though, our friends along the Gulf Coast, they're anticipating a potentially significant severe weather outbreak tomorrow. So we are going to be on the lucky end of this and just get some showers. 57 in Joplin. Winds are variable at about three, but of course that updates every hour. So as you know, the winds have definitely been gusting out there in Joplin. We've got temperatures, another good spread. We've got 49 in Iola, low 50s, upper 50s, and even some low 60s sitting at 60 in Miami right now. So not a bad start to the morning, a little milder than yesterday. These scattered showers and storms start wrapping up by about 9 o'clock this morning. We mostly cloudy and 62 by 11 heading into the afternoon. Again, those partly to mostly cloudy skies and our highs will make pretty decent. Low 70s, not as warm as yesterday, but still not too bad out there. Heading into the evening, clouds increase, a few isolated showers, and we'll see more scattered showers and thunderstorms as we head into the overnight hours. Lows back once again in the low 50s. Scattered showers and storms tomorrow, mid 60s, Wednesday and Thursday, breezy out there. There, and that ushers in much warmer weather. Take a look heading into next week into the low 80s out there with some additional thunderstorm chances as we head into Tuesday and Thursday of next week. Let's check your forecast. We'll be back with more of the KOAM Morning News right after this. Nominate your Ford State Hero today. Garlic butter, bacon, garlic butter. Need we say more? Sonic garlic butter, bacon, cheeseburger. A colossal camera designed to map the sky is set to snap away for the next decade. Jeremy Roth explains in today's Take a Look at This. A team of scientists has just completed building the world's biggest digital camera designed specifically to take a look at this magnificent universe of ours. It took nearly two decades for the SLAC National Accelerator Lab to design and construct this gargantuan camera sporting three billion pixels and a five foot wide optical lens. And you thought your old clunky digital camera back in the day was big. The LSST camera is headed to an observatory in Chile to embark on its own decade-long journey of a near-constant observation of the southern skies. Its massive lens will snap a 15-second multi-wavelength exposure of the sky every 20 seconds for 10 years. Researchers say they'll use the staggering amount of data to create the most comprehensive map of the night sky ever, which could yield new insights into the formation of our galaxy, the nature of dark matter, the expansion of the universe, the sky's the limit. When tech and nature meet, anything's possible. Just take a look at a brand new study aimed at observing birds' interactions with touchscreen tech. Northeastern University's Interact Animal Lab recruited 20 pet birds and observed them playing a simple touchscreen game, manipulating moving targets with their tongues and beaks. The study showed the majority seemed to enjoy the exercise, while a small portion displayed aggression and gave up on the game. Insert Angry Birds joke here. 
Authors of the study, soon to be peer-reviewed, hope the results may inspire future interactive apps and games designed to promote the enrichment and stimulation of these intelligent and beautiful creatures. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. We'll be right back. AM News Now and Dirt Belt Funeral Homes. It's more than a service. It's our ministry. Well, crowds gather in New York Central Park to check out the total solar eclipse yesterday. People heading to the famed park to get a glimpse of the lunar spectacle, which stretched from Mexico to Newfoundland and across 15 states. Those here taking time out of their day to take in the sign and despite a few clouds, New Yorkers marveling at what they see. The last time the U.S. saw a total eclipse was back in 2017. The next coast to coast eclipse won't take place until 2045. And hundreds of couples celebrate a love burning brighter than the sun. More than 300 couples eloped during the eclipse yesterday in a ceremony held just moments before the moon blocked out the sun in Russellville, Arkansas. Couples came from across the country to be a part of this event held at a soccer complex. Russellville, Arkansas was ranked one of the best viewing spots along the path of totality. And we've got ourselves a few thunderstorms out there this morning. Those will begin to clear out by about 9 o'clock. It'll be mostly cloudy through the um, early morning hours, or through the uh, first half of our day. 62 by 11 this morning. Partly to mostly cloudy skies as we head into the afternoon. As we showed you on the future track, some of us may even see moments where you've got completely clear skies. But those clouds will increase again later in the day. Highs around 72 degrees. Again, clouds increasing through the evening. A few isolated showers out there initially. And then... Similar to, to this morning, about 24 hours from now, another round of scattered showers and thunderstorms overnight, and we'll fall back into the low 50s. The only difference, though, is we'll see those scattered showers and storms continue through the day on Wednesday. No severe weather expected, which is good news, uh, but we will have scattered storms mid-60s through Thursday. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we'll start to climb into the low 80s heading into this weekend. An absolutely beautiful weekend out there. And we've got some additional scattered shower and thunderstorm chances as we head into Tuesday and Thursday of next week. That's checking your forecast. Got a whole nother hour of the KOAM morning news right after this.